Hello, everybody. I know it's been a couple of weeks since you've seen me, at least in this capacity, and I have a pretty good reason. It's because I was on vacation and um, actually gave myself permission to enjoy it to the fullest for probably the first time since I started my business. So highly recommend for anybody else who's toiling away at the freelance life, um, if you can get the excuse to get out for a full week or two and you know maybe check your emails but not actually do any work, it's amazing. And so now the only problem is that I have to um, actually start working again. Um, so I'm going to switch up the format a little bit this week. Instead of going over somebody else's website, um, I'm going to actually tell you about a couple changes I recently made to mine, and I have some notes that I'm going to reference just so I make sure I don't forget anything. Um, but I wanted to share with you some of the user experience changes I've made. Uh, partially just by going through all of your websites, um, you know, thinking about user experience design as a part of doing this weekly series, um, you know, things that I've thought about um, while going over other people's websites, and also kind of taking um, tips from other brands that I love and respect. So let's bring that up over here. Okay, so here's my website, The Blogsmith. And um, it overall, it's going to look pretty much exactly the same if you've ever seen it before. It's really just small, teeny things that I've done recently to try to improve the user experience. So one of the first things that you might notice if you have seen my website, the-blogsmith.com before, is that I got rid of the sidebar both on the main blog page and then on the individual blog pages themselves. So... The reason that I did this is because I think that the sidebar was starting to take away from the reading experience. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, what I do is related to blogging and writing. And I figured that if that's really like the most important thing that I can share with the world, I want to make it a nice experience. I want people to actually enjoy going through my blog. I want it to be easy for them to read. And there's still other little things that I plan to do too, but this was kind of a big change. So as you can see now, the con or the layout is totally focused on the content, on the words, on the pictures. There's no distractions. And then, you know, if people do want to say, for example, sign up for an email, which is something that was on my sidebar, they can still do that if they make it to the end of the blog. Um, they can still do that in my footer and also they can see recent articles both in my footer and at the end of my blog post. So for example, one thing that I might continue or what I might do um, as I continue to make user improvement changes on my website is maybe add more inline call to actions. For example, maybe in the middle of the article, um, I would share, you know, another email opt-in form or, um, you know, I might add more links and sort of like call-outs to go to other articles that I've written. Um, but for now, I'm really happy with how it looks and um, how, just how much of a better experience it is. Another thing that I'll probably do, and I, I think I've already changed it, but I might change it more, is making the text size a little bigger. So, you know, I would assume that my audience, um, both based on assumptions and based on Google Analytics data, are people who are millennials and up. You know, there might be some people who are in an older age range, um, but for the most part, it's probably people who aren't, who don't have too many struggles with seeing. But at the same time, you know, bigger font size, if your website or business or whatever is focused on content, can only be a better thing. It just makes it easier for people to actually read what it is you're writing. So another sort of stylistic change I've made is I changed my links uh, within body content to have this sort of like background highlight. Um, and it also has like a drop shadow that you can see. So it kind of um, sticks out a little bit more. And, you know, the way it was before, I kind of didn't pay attention to my link styling for the longest time. And this is a problem that many people have with their own websites. They're just like, okay, it's good enough. And, you know, good enough is better than not done at all. So, you know, for whatever it's worth, if you're going through the same thing where there's certain things that you really want to change, but you just don't have time to, it's better to just make sure your website is live and that it has information than to make sure it's perfect. 
But one of the things that was really bugging me was that my link structure or my link styling just, it didn't pop. And, you know, I have a lot of resources that I share both on my website and articles that I've written for other clients. So I did want to draw more attention to them. So those were some of the major changes with the blog. Um, one other thing that I did recently was I added my categories to this drop down menu here so that people could easily access um, you know, if they wanted to look at a certain part of my blog. And part of the reason as to why I had to add it to my menu is because it's no longer on that sidebar that I had that, you know, listed all the different categories that people could go to for easy access. So it's still here. It's still easy to access. It's just kind of in a different format. Um, what else did I do here? I'm just looking at my notes really quick. So another thing that was done but not perfect, um, excuse me, I have a bit of a throat ache, but I don't know if it's because I'm sick or because I just talk too much. At any rate, so here's my portfolio, and I've been messing with this so much since I switched my layout because the old portfolio I had set up was not fully compatible with this new portfolio styling. So one thing that I would recommend to freelancers, you know, when you're building a website is, you know, consider some sort of standardized portfolio solution that you can easily change as you change your theme because otherwise it is a huge headache. It's a nightmare. They're all different. You have to, you know, like I have so many articles here that I had to re-upload and reformat. I mean, you, you get the idea. I don't have to go all the way down there. But, um, oh no, I'm not sharing my screen, am I? This whole thing has just not been sharing my screen. All right, um, I'll, I'll go over the blog again really quick just so you guys can see that. Technical problems. All right, this one's probably going to get deleted after I share it, but um, just so for those who didn't see my screen, this is how the blog looks. Okay, so it's just all full screen, no sidebar. These are what the links look like, and you can check it out for yourself and follow along if you go to www.the-blogsmith.com. Again, sorry about that, guys. Um, I am just not on my game coming back from vacation. So let's look back at the portfolio so I can show you what I did here. What was missing was that there wasn't um, this sort of filter where you could sort articles by the different topics that I've written. Um, and this is important because when I um, when I'm sending my portfolio to new clients so that they could see things that are relevant to them, I don't want to send them to my full portfolio. I mean, it's fine if they want to check it out and get an idea of what I do in different categories. But what's more important is that they um, is that they can see what I'm capable of within the industry that they want me to write for. So, um, you know, it's easy for them to kind of take things into their own hands here and sort by different topics. Um, I also have like podcasts I've been featured on. Some of these I need to clean up still, but again, done better than perfect. Um, and also things like expert contributions on websites, um, you know, that are cool. Like this one recently, a hot jar featured um, one of my expert opinions and they're a really cool sort of like conversion, like heat map analysis tool. But anyway, um, so these, this filter, you couldn't go and like copy the link from here, but I also have my major portfolio categories listed in my menu. So if I did want to send a direct link to somebody to a specific category, I could do it there. Um, what else did I change recently? Let me look at my notes one more time. And again, I'm sorry, I'm not on my game. I'm going to blame it on being maybe sick and also vacation. Um, another thing I did, and this was right before I left for vacation, was I changed out some of my opt-in monster um, email opt-in forms because I think they were just like not compelling. Um, and I'm not, I'm not even sure if like these are working better yet because I have to dig into the data. I did notice higher email signups while I was on vacation though, which is interesting because you know I obviously wasn't as active on social and I wasn't doing you know these Facebook lives and sending out my email newsletter and all that stuff. So I'm thinking you know just based on that they're more effective than they were. But again, it always helps to dig into the data. So here's my new sort of master email signup 
form, and this is based on um, something that I was working on for my new WordPress course, which is called Teach Me How to WordPress. So I already had created these content checklists um, to help people going through that course, and I figured I might as well try to repurpose them because it's something that's relevant to my audience, you know, whether it's a freelancer, whether it's even like an agency, these are all things that people could use to help them, uh, you know, regardless of sort of the specific persona that they fit. And so, um, so anyway, that's my new email opt-in forums. They just talk about what people are going to get and also what they can expect after they sign up for my email newsletter. So I did that and I, I designed uh, maybe one other one that I could probably show you, um, this one. I also made one specifically for one of my blog articles that I invested a lot of time in, so I wanted to um, make use of that. So here is one for like a one-cheater I made for this blog. It's also a one-cheater that's relevant to that WordPress class that I created. Um, and then another thing that is just kind of random and maybe off topic, but kind of cool, is that I've started to add infographics to some of my more popular or sort of like data related blog posts, whatever could be easily communicated through an infographic. So it's a service called Easily, E-A-S-E-L-Y. Um, 50 bucks a pop, you get unlimited changes. I mean, how gorgeous is this infographic? I'm so happy with how it turned out. Um, now I just need to like actually promote it. <laughs> so, um, those are a lot of the major changes I've made. There's one more thing I know I want to tell you guys about, but let me just see if I skipped anything important besides obviously remembering to share my screen in the beginning. Um, the only other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about um, in terms of usability stuff is on WordPress, you can designate a feature image, and most people do that already for their blog posts, but I think something that I forgot to do for the longest time, which is silly, is doing it for these like top level pages, like my home page, my about page, you know, even like my portfolio, like the the like higher level blog page. So um, you can either do it by setting it as a feature image so that something comes up when you're sharing it on social, or you could do it by um, completing your open graph tags using a tool like Yoast or like um, Social Warfare. So as you can see here, when I pop in the URL of my homepage, um, what used to happen is when I shared it on a social site like Facebook or Twitter is it would just have like an ugly like gray standard image it didn't it, it you know it looks like a broken image almost but now you know at least has something that's related to me and I might even take this a step further and add some words to it to make it a little bit more compelling but at least now it looks better I, I don't know if my about page image is different let me see if it is or not so I can show you that um, I might have to refresh this really quick um, but anyway, just kind of a reminder to go back through your top level pages and making sure they have some image that's representative of your brand or the page or whatever it is that you want people to do there so that, um, you know, you can make more use of it. So let's see, I don't even know if this is working or not. Maybe I just added my bio image or something. I can't remember because a bunch of them are coming up now. But the point just being that, you know, that that social share image is another way to brand yourself and to help people understand who it is and what you do and to get attention before they come through to your website. So at any rate, um, I think I'm going to call it quits at this point because I already messed it up. But hopefully there is something there that was useful for you and for your blog. Um, I just went to an event last night, the Denver Bloggers Club put on, and Jenny Finke, who is in charge of the Denver Bloggers Club, I did an audit for her a little while back, and she told me that she recently made a bunch of changes based on my audits, so I'm hoping that, um, you know, whether I've audited your website personally or not, um, there's something that you're getting out of these. I'm, you know, always open to your thoughts and comments and suggestions and even you know if you have something mean to say I could probably handle it 
Um, so at any rate, I'm going to call it now. Um, I'll be back next week with a new one, probably with a different background because um, we'll be driving back to Chicago. So if you're there, um, say hi. Maybe we can meet up. All right, bye.